Okay, welcome everybody to the Cancer New Moon Distant Reiki Share. I am so very grateful for all of you who are joining live in our circle and those who are listening later. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So just some announcements before we get into the astrology. I'm also available this month for one-on-one sessions, Reiki sessions, as well as a variety of astrology readings. On July 18th, 19th, I'm teaching a Holy Fire Reiki 1 and 2 class and would love to have you in that class if you want to learn Reiki healing for yourself and for others. It's a full certification and it really is just two days of healing bliss in the energy These Reiki classes are just absolutely lovely, lovely ways to spend some time in relaxation and spiritual connection and learning and growing together in a very sacred, safe space. On July 27th, I am super excited to teach an Astrology Basics class And this one is on the planet. So it's Astrology Basics with Reiki, Befriend the Planets. And in that class, we are covering the 10 major planets, two of which are technically luminaries. So the sun and moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, And then also Pluto, again, technically a dwarf planet, but very, very important starting with those and doing also a Reiki experience with the planets, connecting with the planets experientially. So really looking forward to that. And I will record a little video about that class also. August 4th is our next new moon distant Reiki share. That is for the Leo new moon. And it is on a Sunday. I'm hosting that Reiki share based on the timing. So a little different. And I know that that won't work for some people. But y'all, I was thinking about it. And this kind of helped me decide when to schedule it. You know, being a weekend and everything. Leo the zodiac sign is ruled by the sun. And it just felt so right, like host it on sun day, day of the sun. And that's when it really lines up anyway, the best with the timing of the new moon. So that's when we will meet again. More information, details, you know, how to sign up, how to book, all of that can be found on my website, Taylor Norris Reiki. If you have questions, you're welcome to reach out, email me, ask. I look forward to connecting with you more. Now, this is about the transit. So what's coming up in the next week? This is really looking at that energy. So as we had a question in the chat about Cancer and Capricorn, you know, we're still in Cancer season. This is a Cancer new moon. And cancer is associated with, it's a zodiac sign that's associated with the mother. The divine mother is cancer zodiac sign archetypal energy. Capricorn is the opposite zodiac sign. Again, we have in two weeks, the Capricorn full moon and the Capricorn zodiac sign is associated with more of the authority and the father energy. However, both Cancer and Capricorn, Cancer is a water sign, Capricorn is an earth sign, they are both yin signs, they are both more feminine signs. So Capricorn also has this connection to elder grandmother can be also grandfather but like this elder wisdom energy as well in your birth chart you can look at your 
moon for ideas about that mother and maternal connection. And you can look at Saturn for ideas about father. You can also look at sun for ideas about father energy in your chart as well. So that's a little bit about that. And Cancer Capricorn in terms of the houses. Now, this is where it can be a little more confusing. Fourth house is typically linked in the natural horoscope and the natural zodiac for somebody who has Aries rising is linked to Cancer zodiac sign. And some astrologers link the fourth house to mother, others link to father. And Capricorn is linked to the 10th house. Again, some astrologers link 10th house to father. And that makes sense for 10th house is also linked to career. And, you know, from a patriarchal standpoint, that is you has been the role of the man or the father. Some astrologers link 10th house to father, others to mother. This is where you put on your astrologer investigation glasses and detective wear, and you look at your own chart and kind of feel into it. I have been listening around this and exploring this quite a lot in my own chart, and I see it can kind of work both ways. And I also really resonate with fourth house being linked to father. That's that works better in my own chart, and I know it works better in other people's charts as well. So fourth house with father, 10th house with mother. But if you're somebody who resonates and it's the opposite, you know, obviously trust your own experience there. So that's a little bit about that dynamic. And what's nice is the Capricorn full moon later on in this month, I believe it's July 21st, is going to set us back into a cycle where we get the new moon in the new sign first, and then we get the full moon that corresponds with that that sign. So it sets us kind of back in a more regular order because we had the two Capricorn full moons. The next two weeks, really, really lovely here. I have all the transits on screen and you can see flow, 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 flow. If you know how to read the aspect symbols, we have sextiles, the star, the asterisk is the sextile symbol. The triangle is the trine and these are harmonious aspects. So we have lots of harmonious flows for really like this next week. Lovely you know, easier, a little softer, a little gentler for us, you know, very, very helpful here, kind of a, a relaxation break. It's been pretty intense with the Saturn stationing retrograde and also Neptune stationing retrograde. I know a lot of, a lot of people have been really feeling that. So a lot of flows, a lot of just kind of, you know, breathe easy for a moment. Then we get an energy change July 11th. Venus enters Leo. And this in and of itself is very nice, creative, self-expressive, lovely energy, Venus and Leo. That said, because Pluto is in Aquarius, as soon as planet Venus linked to our divine feminine energies, our creativity, our relationship, as soon as Venus enters Leo shortly thereafter, she is going to oppose Pluto in Aquarius. So we could say, you know, she makes a grand entrance into Leo with that immediate opposition of Pluto in Aquarius. So what does this mean for us? This is transformational energy with Pluto in Aquarius transformational energy in terms of our divine feminine essence, in terms of our creative life force energy, our relationships, our sense of value and worth. This can be changes in money, systems, currency, values, you know, on a global scale. And what it really feels like at a more personal level is like, 
what is most important to you right now, to your full creative self-expression, your vitality, your well-being, and connecting to that powerful, deep sense of self-worth and self-love and appreciation and embodiment and awareness of your own divine feminine energy there with Venus. So there can be quite a lot of soul directive, creative life force energy coming through the 11th, 12th, 13th. And what's nice, this isn't like a long transit either. So Venus opposing Pluto, Venus is moving pretty quickly. It'll just be a few days of that. July 15th. Okay, this is our big day. This is like circle it on the calendar. I know many of you already have. Good job. July 15th, we have Sun Square Chiron. So powerful healing moment, healing energy, motivation to heal, take healing action. And also the the big showstopper here is Mars conjunct Uranus. And on our next slide, I have the chart of this conjunction, July 15th. This is the galactic chart. So showing not only the position of the planets in this chart, their zodiac signs, but also are the planets making any kind of conjunctions with fixed stars, black holes? And we see that indeed, yes, there are many galactic activations and they're very powerful galactic activations and alignments. So in this chart, Mars is conjoining Uranus at 26 degrees, 19 minutes of Taurus. So it's good to know, do you have anything in your chart around 26 degrees of Taurus? You will certainly be feeling this energy. Do you have anything around 26 degrees of the fixed signs? So Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, this can bring in shifts and action, shift in consciousness, motivation, new energy, new developments, unexpected, really the unexpected. And Uranus transits are difficult to really talk about because it is that element of the unexpected with Uranus. So I can't say like, this is what's going to happen or like, this is what it's going to be. It's wild card energy. It's maverick energy. And with Mars conjoining Uranus, it's really energizing that wild card, unexpected surprise energy. So anything's possible. And what this also feels like as it's occurring in the sign of Taurus, it's meant to break things up and break up stagnation, to break up stasis, to help us through any kinds of blocks where we've been feeling stuck or in a rut because Taurian energy, one of the shadow sides of it, it can be like too fixed and too stuck, weighed down, heavy. This also feels like it's just letting go of any of those burdens, any of those weights, any of that excessive heaviness or density that is just no longer serving you and no longer serving your highest good at this time. So really, really powerful. And I'm also noticing too, so the ruler or the depositor of this Taurus energy is actually Venus, Venus and Leo, who just, we were just talking about, just opposed Pluto. So this renewed sense of power and life force and deeper soul connection. 
We also have the divine feminine energy very, very highlighted as this conjunction is occurring conjunct in a conjunct, very powerful alignment with fixed star Al Goal and Perseus constellation. Perseus is a warrior constellation in the sky, the young prince, the young warrior you know, swoops in and saves the day. That was his role in mythology. And Algol is actually the, has been called the demon star or the daemon star because it is linked to the head of Medusa. And Medusa has a very interesting backstory of how she became portrayed as Medusa and demonized in essence. And the star is very connected to that misunderstanding or misrepresentation of the feminine and how we are reconciling that now and atoning for that and, and forgiving those wounds and stepping into a world where that powerful feminine is honored and realized and welcomed and has a seat at the table. Al Ghul's also connected to, you know, what is this raw feminine energy? Think of Mother Earth energy and Mother Nature and the volcanoes of the earth and the earthquakes and the forces and the storms and forest fires, all these different earth events that happen as earth intelligence is unfolding, cleansing, purifying, healing herself, doing what she needs to do to maintain homeostasis. So this is a very raw, primal, primitive, deep, sacred feminine energy that's coming through. And I think the opportunity here is to have that awakening within each of us to be grounded, be mindful, be embodied. And the more we can do that, really take care of our physical bodies, the more we can connect to that primal power of the ancient feminine that is really awakening within us. At this time, this is a wonderful time too. Uranus very connected to the galactic to connect with any and all of your star family. And some of the star energies that are particularly highlighted around this time are in this table here. So Procyon, Acrux star, Algol, of course, we talked about Hey, Dar, some of the Lyran energy is available to us. Royal star energy with Aldebaran and Antares, Pegasus, Skiat star, the super galactic center, two of our cosmic birds here, Aladfar and Altair stars, as well as, let's see, Spica and Virgo, and also Arcturus. So many different star family here. And remember, all the stars are contained within you, so you can always connect to beyond this list here every single day. And this may be a day where it feels easier or more accessible, or it could even be like a more embodied experience of that connection to your star family. So really wonderful, really powerful this is also with the moon conjunct a crux star here. We see it down here. That is a star that has us connecting to our intuition, to our psychic gifts, to being more open to energies beyond the veil. So that that sense of, oh, there is no veil <laughs> being more possible so that we can connect to more of our multidimensional self and star beings and so on. So that's supporting that kind of interaction in a safe space with good intentions, of course, as well. And always just ask for, if you want to, this is what I do, connect me with enlightened star family, enlightened beings of the stars. And 
the enlightened realms within those star systems and can't go wrong with that that very simple set of instructions there. This is also, I, I think I talked about this in the video. I know I've mentioned it to some of you already. This is like, this can be a bit of an accident prone energy. So definitely being mindful, being present, being in your body. You know, if you're operating heavy machinery, driving the car, that kind of thing, just like know that this kind of like, woo, you know, excitatory energy is in the air and, you know, keep both feet on the ground when you need to. If you can go and be in the clouds and in La La Land, just make sure you are in a safe space to be able to be in La La Land and when you need to be a bit more grounded and more aware that you are able to find your body and do that also. I'll be watching the volcanoes here too in Hawaii because Mars Uranus is a link to volcanic energies. And I know lately the seismologists here have been talking about increased earthquake activities and increased seismicity at Kilauea volcano here, one of the one of the, if not the most active volcano in the world. So it's very interesting to track her cycles and knowing the astrology and the planetary alignments. So she's been pretty quiet. Mars Uranus comes around. Okay, this volcanic activity is stepping up. So really, really cool. The week after that, Y'all, I can't even make this up. We have a bunch of flows again. Like, it's so wonderful. We have some flows leading up to this powerful Mars Uranus, and then we have lots more sextiles and trines and flows and like this smooth, smoother, easy energy. So absolutely lovely. July 20th, we have Mars entering Gemini. This This is a big energy change. So you know, the new and improved Mars after this Mars-Uranus conjunction enters the sign of Gemini and very interesting too. So it will be conjoining Jupiter later on. So it's like whatever kind of opened up to at around the time of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. So thinking about April 20th of this year, could be re-energized with this Mars Uranus on July 15th. And then when Mars makes its way all the way to Jupiter, which I don't have the exact date on screen, but is probably sometime end of July, early August, we may have yet another kind of unfoldment or evolution of that whatever started like really popping open with the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, April 20th. So that's something to be aware of too. Mars and Gemini energy can be a little bit of scattered, scattered energy feeling like, oh my gosh, there's just so much to do, busy energy. So being grounded, being aware of that, thinking about what are your priorities. And I see this full moon Capricorn, final degree of Capricorn. It's going to help us be aware of like what is actually at the top of the priority list so that this busy Mars and energy can do its thing and take action, especially as the sun enters Leo July 21st. Other thing I need to mention here is that in the second half of the month, we start preparing for our next Mercury retrograde. So July 16th is when Mercury enters its pre-shadow period. So Mercury will be traversing degrees in Leo zodiac sign and early Virgo that it will then be retracing after it stations retrograde. So there may be things you're starting at the second half of this month that are then followed through on or revisited over the course of the next six weeks. So July 16th to August 3rd, August 4th, we're really in that pre-shadow phase, August 4th, Mercury stations retrograde at four degrees, six minutes of Virgo. And this is another time to go ahead, look at your natal chart. Do you have planets or points between 21 Leo and four degrees Virgo? 
and maybe you do, maybe you don't, you can also see what house is 21 Leo and for Virgo, what house area, it might be two houses that Mercury will be traveling through. And these could be the life areas that are really have your attention, have your focus, have you really like examining, reviewing, reflecting, and being very productive, being very creative with the Leo energy and also quite practical with the Virgo and thinking about what are the needs of your vitality is really important right here. Virgo very very much a sign having to do with health and well-being. Leo ruled by the sun, our vitality, our life force energy. So these could be some themes and topics, that mixing of the Leo energy and the Virgo energy, as well as more practical, creative expression and creative projects. So really, really lovely. That retrograde is from August 4th to August 28th, so pretty much the whole month of August, and then Mercury will station direct, begin moving forward again, and clear its shadow region September 11th. So just something to be aware of here. It's fun. I still will notice when kind of Mercury retrograde things are going on, but this is not something to like fear, freak out about, think, oh gosh, I can't do anything from July 16th to September 11th. Mercury retrogrades occur three times a year, three to four times a year. It, it really depends. So it's regular. It's just think about it like a regular cycle that is as normal as the seasons changing. So it, it can be quite a productive and generative time of great focus and activity and really not something to be afraid of or feel like you have to radically modify your life to accommodate Mercury retrograde. I know this is something I, I kind of felt like I did have to do that at first when I first learned about it. And the more I've worked with it, the more I've just kind of like relaxed into Mercury retrograde and just a cycle and and just something to to be aware of. I'm just going to look at your comments. Wonderful. I see we have a birthday, July 15th. Oh my goodness. What a big birthday. Mars Uranus coming together. Yeah, it's, we are set up for a very powerful month here in July with yeah, huge activation, energization, but also like I was showing y'all lots of ease and flow and some some nice reflective helping us integrate. Yeah, with the Mercury preparing for its retrograde. This happened actually, y'all remember back March, April, we had our eclipses and then we also had a Mercury retrograde in April. And it felt like it was so nice to have that Mercury retrograde occurring so close to the eclipses to help us integrate like the big changes, the big shifts, like what just happened, <laughs> you know, Mars Uranus can just, well, what just happened? Like, what was that? And then having that time to go within and reflect on kind of what is coming up for you at this time. So that is another kind of interpretation of Mercury retrograde, the integration period that I've found really resonates and is a constructive way to work with it. 